to hear from WCR Nation, the window cleaning podcast, and of course, WCR itself and the huge convention. What's going on? Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about should your spouse come to the huge convention? Do they get anything from it? Is it like horrible for them? What's the deal? But we're talking to somebody you may know, Josh Latimer, with his lovely wife, Ashley. How are you guys? Good. Uh, we are so amazing. Good. How are you, Jersey? I'm, I'm so good because I'm sitting inside, not getting attacked by bugs right now, and you guys are <laughs> getting your awesome uh, driveway internet, and you probably have bugs. So Yeah, we have weird internet issues, but it's okay. It's working good now. We just got to stand in this exact spot while the bugs attack us. But <laughs> we're excited to talk about the huge convention and why you – absolutely need to find a way to persuade your spouse to come with you and it's not so that they can look at surface cleaners or something <laughs> like there's other reasons yeah for benefits so thanks for having us no worries well let's let's put this out there so people see you they see trees in the background if you didn't know josh latimer lives on like 132,000 acres he lives in a castle it's like a whole thing it's it, it is what it is it's just you know He's out there. You've actually had events at your uh, your estate, right? Yes, we did. Actually, we had our first one only a few months after we moved here. Yep. Note to self, that was stressful, but yeah, it went good. amazing. <laughs> we have we've had two, and then we have one more, and that's yeah, the we last have an event one. here this this fall. Actually, it's a small event. It's not like a huge convention type event. It's yeah. where we sit down and mastermind. Uh, style tables and actually bring in uh, seven figure home service business owners to sit down with you and like fix your your business reverse engineer everything pull up the hood nice. really literally individually help you get things fixed uh plus we come to our house we ride mini bikes shoot shotguns and have fun as well so it's pretty awesome. nice yeah. well here's i was uh I, I i'm putting my foot in my mouth but tell everybody who you are because i just assume everybody knows you but tell us everything that you're into what you do <laughs> tell us about that if somebody doesn't know who you are sure well this is my better half ashley my name is josh we got married at 20 years old we we're high school sweethearts i was the quarterback of the football team she was a cheerleader we come from a small town we lived a mile apart from each other when we got married, I was a pizza delivery driver, and we lived in a trailer park. So fist bump to everybody that's ever re repped a trailer because it's awesome. Yeah, and We had great memories there. Um, when we were around 25 years old, we ha had our first kid. Well, she had our first kid. And I quit a really good job at a bank to start a window cleaning business. And I did that. I was unbelievably naive on what it would take to succeed with it. I really had no idea what I was doing. Um, but gradually, we started to kind of put things together. The first, what, two and a half years were really, really hard. Really hard. We made almost no money. We almost starved to death. I had a car repossessed. We had our electricity shut off. I felt like a total failure as a man, as a provider. And in addition to that, our marriage was ter horrible. horrible. It was terrible. <laughs> it was really bad. And, uh, but, you know, long story short, through the use of systems in our business, and actually, through the use of systems in our relationship, we turn things around. We don't have a perfect business relationship, but that business grew to 25, 30 employees. Um, it did it never quite hit 200000 a month in revenue, but it did really, really well. And we sold the company, moved to Costa Rica with our kids. We actually have five kids now. Mm -hmm. And when I was down there, I started a podcast. Uh, I started a, a company called Send Gym, which is a marketing software company. And even an, and another company called Automate Grow Sell. And so we've done all this stuff. We've ended up impacting and helping thousands of people. It's been crazy. Uh, the last few years um, have been wild. Uh, but that's where we are today. Our passion is really the, the family relationship when it comes to entrepreneurial families. And if you're watching this, that means you. And you live a very unique life. What do you have to say about all that, Ash? It was a roller coaster. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, yeah. It was not always a fun roller coaster, but um, as we did add systems, things got a lot better. Um, and now we started something for entrepreneur families called Honor and Fire, and we just started it a few weeks ago, and we're really excited about that. So we got our hands in lots of pots, but uh, we're, yeah. Yeah. So, so. TLDR, too long, didn't read. <laughs> Josh Latimer started from nothing, created a company that was giant and made tons of money, moved to Costa Rica, lived with monkeys, moved from Costa Rica to live with in a castle, and now you're here just like creating stuff and, and being awesome. We're just, 
we're just passionate parents that want to give our kids an unfair advantage in life. We love the internet. We love business. We love value creation. We love serving and helping and connecting with other like-minded people. Cause I don't know if you know this, but you're a weirdo. Mm-hmm. We're a weirdo. I've heard. All I've the heard. people that are going to pay money to go to a, a convention about cleaning. They're all weirdos. Anybody that has a business, starts a business, quits a safe and secure job. Anybody that does that is a weirdo. And I mean that like in a loving, amazing way, we love people like you guys and we want to serve and help. And so what we're working on now and what we'll talk about at the huge convention is this idea of family systems. And we're happy to go into what that means if you want or take it wherever you want to go. Yeah. Well, do me one quick favor because every time I put something on the screen, I completely cover Ashley's face. Just go down a little bit more so I don't keep covering your face. There you go. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so uh, a Wesley... Uh, blow me something like that. Uh, is uh, Wesley, in the group. Wesley, what's up? Uh, Wesley? <laughs> he said, Wesley Coach Brown. Latimer, looking good, must be your workouts this week. So, uh, Wesley is an awesome OG cool <laughs> kid, by the way. If yeah. anybody doesn't know Wesley, he's gonna be at the huge convention. You should definitely meet him. He's like one of the smartest dudes I've ever met. So, super cool yeah, dude. He'll have a seven figure business in his mid 20s, probably. probably I mean, he, he's he may have it before. Here. Yeah, he may close. have one before the convention starts. He's very close. Um, he's very, very dedicated. Very smart guy. Yeah. Nice. So uh, Gladys just said, "Who can I call to ask questions? If you have questions on the huge convention, just go to the site. It's www.thehugeconvention.com. There's a contact us page on there. It'll get you right to the organizers. You can ask away uh, on the question side of things." Um, Gene O'Neill, another one who said he may be going, but I think we talked him into it. He'll for sure be there and I'm holding him to it. He never said he'd be there, but he's for sure going to be there. He Gene said the is Latimer- amazing. Gene is awesome. Gene, what's up? I fist bump. Bye. He knows that you're out in the boondocks. He knows, uh, he loves send Jim radius bomb. He loves all that. So super, super cool. But anyway, yeah. So as a spouse, which I know, Josh, I know I should be talking to you a lot, but I'm going to be focusing more on your your lovely spouse because she's the one who she's involved in the business, but she's not involved in the business to some degree, right? I mean, kind of tell us your involvement in the window cleaning side of it when that was going on. Like, did you care about window cleaning at all? <laughs> well, I cannot squeegee a window at all. I've tried. I'm just really, really bad at it. Um, I'm really great at cleaning school, uh, screens, and I was really great at, like, I did all the, the stuff that no one wants to do. Like, I had to go buy the supplies. I had to yeah. wash the towels, fold the towels. I had to buy the snacks. Do I had to clean toilets. You know, you name it. Yeah. If, if we didn't have someone to do it, that was my job. So I was really behind the scenes a lot. And um, But when I first went to the huge conventions, we looked at a lot of um, power washers, and my eyes sometimes glazed over. <laughs> but... It was so life changing because of the people that you meet, the community that you meet. Um, we came home and we like just skyrocketed things. Like things in our business started to change because you come back changed from the human. Yeah. Side. You come back empowered to do things because you know that there's other people doing the same thing that you're doing. And it was really encouraging as a spouse to go and see what it's all about. Even though I don't know all the technical terms, um, it was so empowering even for a spouse yeah there's so much more than like how to clean a window or heck how to run a business there's so many other little facets to it that complete everything and that's really what you get out of this is is seeing somebody else that is doing the same thing as you and they're like there's an instant understanding like even a spouse who like you said you're not terribly involved and you couldn't care about pressure washers but yet you could meet somebody else's spouse who doesn't really do too much in the business, but they don't really care about, they're the same person as you and you get, you get it and you understand that like, man, Josh worked late again. I guess I'm not going to see him this week. That kind of stuff you get, you, you see, you know, you understand. So, and I think you're frozen. There you go. You're back. Don't worry. You're, you're frozen. uh, It was, it was was flattering at least. It wasn't a bad one. So yeah, you're super pixely, but you're you're good. You're back. You're back. Uh, I have back. <laughs> yeah, um, the but yeah, there's it's like, it's it's amazing to have the understanding, you know, just the the underlying understanding with people. Yes, and to know that there's other people out there like you, and there's other spouses out there like you. I'll tell you something, this stuff ain't no joke. And we can talk about the huge convention and how it's warm and fuzzy, and that's really great. But you know, 
marriages end because of small business, actually the number yeah. one cause of divorce is financial uncertainty, right? Well, how, do, let me ask you this. Does your financial uncertainty go up or down when you start a cleaning business? Yeah. It goes down. Like it yeah. makes it worse. You throw kids in the mix, you throw a dog, a goldfish, and there's too much stress. The goldfish finally blows everything apart and it, it can be a dumpster fire. What we're going to help people like, this year at the huge convention among all of the other amazing presenters is we're going to be talking about family systems. The idea that if you actually get hyper connected with your spouse for real, at like a deeper level than you even knew was a thing, I'm not trying to be cheesy. I'm like, literally like you become a wrecking ball. If you can do that, if you can create a family identity that your kids and you're here to and latch on to and live by. If you can learn how to do goal setting as a family, it's rocket fuel inside of your family. And what's really interesting about yeah. our story, how the marriage directly tied to the financial success. Really, like it's, it's like this chart. Like if you could graph it out, like how connected we were was paralleling the growth in the business. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit about that, uh, about your, your, your new venture that you're in. I know that's not necessarily what the convention is, but this is on the same thing. It's, it's tied all in. Tell us a little bit about it, why you started that. Where can people go? How can people sign up? Tell us about that. Sure. Do you want to do it? Or, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Know. So we, we launched a movement called Honor and Fire. Now, Honor and Fire is a community. It's actually a free Facebook group called the Honor and Fire Community. Uh, it's a community for entrepreneurial families who want to do three things with their life. Number one, they want to build wealth. They want to become radically generous in their community and their family with their friends. They want to change the world. And number three, they want to engineer a family culture with their kids so that their kids have an unfair advantage in life. And so what we're doing is providing resources and systems and frameworks to help families like that because we know how hard this is. We've almost been divorced. Like we're high school. A school's, bazillion times. We've had massive pain in our journey and yeah. we have a, a deep heart to help and give back where we can. We're not experts on all this, but we are experts in not giving up and because they saved our marriage, they saved our business and they can save yours too. And it can, that change can happen quick. And so if your spouse is not sure if they want to go to a, you know, a nerdy convention, you got to get them there because it's not about the, the technical stuff, the equipment, or even the business systems, but your spouse could meet another spouse. Your spouse could meet my wife. They could be encouraged. And you know what? The number one thing that we can help people get again is hope. Yeah. It's hope that even if they've been stuck for a decade and it's not working and they're not making the money they want and, and it's hard that things can change quickly with the right systems. And we're going to help with that. Yeah. What's funny is you said the word nerdy, nerdy convention. That's what my wife literally calls it. So <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. You're a nerd. So am I. Yeah. I didn't think it was nerdy. I don't think it's nerdy when you go there. Well, it's it's all the guys standing around like talking about the PSI and the GPM. <laughs> okay. That's nerdy. There is some nerdy there is some nerding out, but there's awesome tons of awesomeness and great conversations and a lot. When we first started going to the huge convention, there weren't as many wives coming. And now it's like becoming more of a thing. Yeah. It's becoming the thing. Yeah. So I always say that. Like, no, you can go. go. Oh, yeah. I was, was going to say, I always think it's so cool. Like you see the clusters of the wives that like know each other and they go there every year, just like we do to see our friends. They like see their friends and they hang out and people vacation as families because they know each other, but they're across the country. Like the bonds that they make with this, just like, listen, you know, the fact that if your friend, Josh, has a wife that could be your wife's friend, you guys could be friends all day long. You have a free pass right there. That's right there. true. That's a very practical tip. <laughs> you very you practical. have to, yeah. Happy wife, happy life. That's part of it. Yeah. But that right. part of it is like, as we nerd out in the business side of it, um, I, I've heard too that uh, we had just talked to somebody a couple of weeks, about a week and a half ago. And she said that she didn't know that the whole industry was what it was. She just knew that her husband kind of struggled and was doing this thing. And she kind of was like, who would have thought window cleaning? Nobody's doing that. And then she went there and there was like a thousand contractors who did the same thing. And she was like, oh my gosh, like, that guy over there makes a million dollars a year. Like that right. kind of stuff, you know, it really opens your eyes to the potential. It's all about community, man. You got to You got to be connected uh, with your family. You got to have an identity for your company and for your family. 
you got to learn how to set goals and stuff. But after that, you live in, you got to live inside the right community. I'll tell you another secret is that not all advice is created equal <laughs> and sitting and learning on the internet is fine. It's awesome. Like we sell educational products on the internet and stuff, but, but you got to make sure you're getting competent advice. And one of the other things about the huge is that all the, the speakers, huge. yeah, the huge, the I call huge. it that. I call it that now. <laughs> I'm going to the huge. Thing. The huge. You're going to the huge. Cool. See you there. Um, <laughs> All the speakers and presenters are vetted. They're high achievers. They've accomplished a lot of things. And the industry is getting more and more sophisticated every year. More and more people are breaking the seven-figure mark. They're hitting 50, 60, 80, 100,000 dollars a month fast. People like Wesley, who was on here watching, these guys, these kids, they're doing extraordinary things. And if you think you got it figured out or you can't don't have something to learn, you're crazy. Um, you know, now at this stage in our business journey, we'll spend money and go to an event at the drop of a hat. We're going to Denver with our kids to a business event. It's going to cost us $5,000 to go to this thing because if I learn one thing and I come home and execute on it, I'll make hundreds of thousands of dollars over the life of that nugget, right? So it's, it's a very strategic, wise investment. It's low risk. The only way you don't get an ROI on this is if you don't show up and take notes and if you don't even remotely attempt to implement 5% of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. Uh, Bobby Walker, by the way, just said, uh, Ashley Latimer is awesome. Who's the guy? It's just some dude. It's Hi, don't Bobby. worry about it, Bobby. You'll, you won't, you won't see him again. Don't worry about it. It's, Tell it's your wife fun. I said hello. <laughs> see, there you go. The friends you, you've met on that. Uh, Thad said that the joys of living in the boondocks, he also lives in the boondocks. Like, yeah. He's like, you know, killing snakes barefoot with sticks kind of boondocks, you know? I heard that Thad was raised by wolves in the wilderness. I heard he was until the wolves were like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, no. You're too wild for us. You need to tone it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wolves actually left him, and then he was just, yeah. He had to be uh, raised by uh, New Orleans, I think. Um, But uh, Jake LaFavre. Favre? LaFavre? It's all wrong. Uh, my hearing aid isn't working right, LOL. He said every other word. That's just the glitches of living out in the uh, county, man. It just uh, it happens oh, sometimes. Oh, no. Is our signal not coming through good? It's good now. It's good now. It just there was a, there was a time a bit of a uh, little bit of uh, freezing time. So It might happen again. Yeah. yeah that's, it's the uncertainty of these live <laughs> events. But Bobby Walker said, my wife won't, won't let me hang out with Josh Latimer. True. Uh, he's a bad influence. Um, he's always uh, he's always out there partying and, and causing mischief. Yep. I didn't know you were so wild. <laughs> it's because I'll make Bobby ride mini bikes, and because he's seven foot three, it's almost certain he'll fall off and hurt himself. He will look like one of the, those Shriner guys, you know, like where you're driving. You know, that's uh, <laughs> big guys. We just we 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 can't do certain things. We have go karts here, and I look like King Koopa every time I ride them. It just can't do it. Can't do it. Uh, Thad said he was orphaned by the wolves. We figured so. Uh, we knew it was a rumor, but <laughs> I'm, I'm curious what everybody like. What would be a valid reason to not come to the huge convention? That'd that's be, what that's I'm a great question. Out. Because we have a lot of time still. We have like a month until it even happens. So if like if you're saying, "Oh, I don't have the money to do it," that's not really valid because you can make it happen. A uh, question I like to ask people is: goal is to get enough money to go and attend the huge i'm i'm just guessing he said if your life's goal is to get enough money to go to the huge convention you should go to the huge convention and learn how to make the money to be able to go there it's coming back he'll be back he'll be back but that's it exactly what josh is talking about is that if you are what's if if you're not coming to the show but you're watching right now comment down below and tell me why you're not coming i'd love to hear it and he's back yeah sorry about that so no what I was saying was the reason people think they can't come or they have an external obstacle where they're like, well, it's impossible because I don't have the X dollars to go is because they haven't committed uh, to going. Right. If you make a commitment, you'll find a way to do it. You'll find a way to climb the mountain to do the thing. Yeah. And the reason they don't make the commitment is because they don't understand the radical change that can happen from going. Right. And so you're going to have to, like, have a little bit of faith that we're not telling you fake things. We're not being. uh it's not hyperbole when we say it can change your life and change your business. Yeah. It's not hyperbole when we say one thing you learn could make you $10,000 the month that you get home. That's Easily. real. Yeah. Um, 
So you got to show up. You got to be an action taker. You have to be a man or woman of action and you got to go for it. And yes, it's nerve wracking and scary. If you don't know people, it can be intimidating, but everybody there is very warm, very yeah. friendly. The culture is, is well curated by, by, by Chris Lambertini's and Thad Ekhoff. They know what they're doing. There's they're veterans. There's a reason it's the biggest event for these industries in the world yeah. it's for a reason. Oh, yeah. And it keeps growing. It already was the biggest and it keeps getting bigger. And put your faith in that and show up. I'd love to shake your hand. And I know Ashley would too. Yeah. The, the part with why this event is growing so fast is because people go and then they realize they could never miss another one. You know, that's the reason this growth is going 44, 45% growth from last year. And this is year number, like, I mean, this is years in and it's still getting that kind of growth. And it's because the people who went are going to go again. They're going to make sure that they go. It's, it's the theory of, of, you know, the, the little toddler running towards the, the busy road. You know with all of your being that you need to stop him from running in and getting hit by a car. So you will do anything from pushing people over to running and you'll do everything because you know that's right and you'll make it happen. If you don't think that it's right or for some reason you think that it's not for you or it's it, it's not a goal and it's not something that you have set aside, then you won't make it happen. So make it happen. Like Bobby Walker said, he said, the only valid reason to not go is to say, I'm 100% happy with my business, the current situation I'm in, and I don't need to improve. And the truth of the matter is, is even if you say, you know what, I really like the dollar amount of that right now, or I really like the you know, the clients I have, or yes, that's true, but you could always improve. You can always be stronger as a company. You can always have better systems to make things run smoother. You can do the same amount of work in say five hours less a week. You know, that's improving. You can always improve. The, the point of life is to improve, improve, improve. You're always learning and you're always growing. Once you get to the point of you can't learn or grow anymore, that's it. You have no other reason to kind of be here if you've, if you've hit that pinnacle. No one actually thinks that they're 100% content and they don't need to grow. Nobody that's achieved anything wants to stop growing because you never would have achieved it unless you were addicted to growth in the first place. Not just yep. financial growth, just personal development, learning, growing. It's just it's a game to us. It's not about money. It's about your marriage. It's about your family accomplishing things. It's about challenging yourself and working through it. If you're a real entrepreneur, you get addicted to that stuff. And yeah. this is a place where a whole bunch of weirdos just like you hang out and talk shop and talk business. And it's amazing. Yeah. It's you, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say to encourage the wives to come is uh, you, a, if you want your wife to be your biggest fan and cheer on your business, you need to take her. You need to take her and the business needs to give her a win. And a vacation or a biz bizcation is totally a win. She can see your environment, but she can also have some time to herself or whatever it may be. But your wife really should go. And I wasn't always the biggest fan of my husband's business because it felt like it always took a lot. Yeah. Um, but the huge convention helps change that. And so you can, if you want your wife to be your biggest cheerleader, you should really encourage her to go and if you're the wife, you should really encourage your husband to go. Yeah. It's one of those things that if you ever, if you are married at all, male or female, your spouse thinks at some point that your business is more important than them at some point because businesses are babies. It is an infant. When you first have it, you have to feed it. You have to make sure that it doesn't, you know, roll off a of bed or that it, you know, needs to change its diapers. You have to give it all of your attention all the time. And as things go, you can give it a little bit. You can let it go a little bit. You don't have to give it as much time. But if it's already too late with your spouse, if you've already given your business more attention than you have your spouse, because you're growing a thing for the family, it sometimes it gets to be that point where it's a really hard climb to kind of come back out of that. I can completely agree with that. Yes. Word. Word. It's a selfish baby sometimes too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's not just a baby. It's a mistress. Like a lot of people are having an affair on their wife with their business right now. Yeah, That's they have why. to choose. They have what to choose. I, I used to, tell, I used to call, tell my husband, I'm like, oh, it's the other woman. She was <laughs> always got her, her, our money, her, his time, everything. Yeah. Attention. Yeah. Attention, she always got new resources, cars Resources, energy. Me, new cars. It, yeah. We in the phone call in the middle of the night yeah. going, sorry, I got to take this. I got to go. It's a, it's a work thing. And it literally, literally we, we did we did snow removal, and I, I don't know how many times I've been in the middle of sleeping, answered my phone, and been like, okay, 
And then my wife would just believe that I was going to work. And that's really what I was doing is to go fix a plow truck in negative 20 degree weather in Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when you get on the same page, it's amazing when the business becomes ours instead of, oh, you're your business and you're this. Yeah. Oh, man. Things can shift. I got to switch arms. My arm's getting tired. Oh, do you think? Here's one last thing, though. If you haven't gotten your tickets, please do go www.thehugeconvention. I don't know why I keep saying www, but thehugeconvention.com and get your tickets. The prices will go up on the 12th. I'm sorry in advance. We're telling you now. The tickets go back to the original price. Right now they're discounted because it's far enough out. Now is the kind of final push for this thing. Like people are saying they're getting excited because it's a couple weeks away. It's a couple weeks away, which means like every few days, those prices have to go back up. They are $600 tickets at the door this year. Um, and that's really still worth it, 100%. And we'll still have 50 people to show up at the door and pay that because it's last minute and they made it work. And they don't care because they know that they're getting value from it. But right now you can save hundreds of dollars by doing that. So go do that. Go to the site. Just go do it. Get your tickets. Go see Josh. See Ashley. Say what's up. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the class. Like, I know you kind of touched on it a little bit, but like what focuses are you kind of going that you don't think people maybe thought of already? I can guarantee you that no one has seen any kind of presentation like what we're going to give. One, right. of, one of the things we're going to talk about is sex, as uncomfortable as that is. <laughs> but the core of what we're going to talk about is what we call the five steps to legacy. And so there's, there's kind of a pattern or a framework for your family to get hyper-connected and to get, you know, your identity established and to get targets and goals set individually with your marriage. There's all these, these things. We're going to kind of lay that out and show you how to do it. So if things are out of whack, how do you get it in sync really, really quickly? It's actually a lot nice. easier than you think. It's very practical. It's not like woo-woo theoretical stuff. We're going to tell you. Uh, step one, step two, step three, how to get hyper-connected, right? Uh, yeah. How do you identify your spouse's win language, similar to a love language, but different? We're going to explain that. We're going to help you establish a family identity. You know, your business has a mission statement. Does your family, your business might have a manifesto. Does your family, we have a thing called the Latimer birthright that we read our children. We've branded our family. This shirt I'm wearing right here that says do hard things. We custom made it because that's one of our isms inside the Latimer household. And our kids wear this stuff. It's nice. painted on our walls. It's on our woodshed. Why do we do it? Because it makes your family a rocket ship. And it's not about like making a bunch of money. It just makes you connected it makes you a few doers it, it it's it's amazing so yeah. we're going to show you what we did who we learned it from and then give you the tools to do the same thing and by the way josh is like in the top of like the best speakers ever not to brown knows you but it's just you could i could hear you talk about toast and i probably would be completely fill up a notebook with it but <laughs> back to the sex thing by the way uh viewers just went up to 200 people watching after you said that uh, Jake said, did he just say sex? It would have been more risque if she didn't giggle and like tuck her head down. It would have been like, oh, this is where he's going. But then she was like embarrassed and it made the whole thing okay. So <laughs> while we're going here, Leslie will happily share why sex is important. I will. I business. just didn't know. Like, I was Go ahead. Oh, goodness. Oh, okay. Well, I just did it for the huge convention, but uh, we talk about sex all the time <laughs> because our sex life actually helps a business grow. And there's. <laughs> oh, no. And uh, we basically, when my husband started his company, I kind of used sex as a weapon. It's really embarrassing <laughs> to kind of say, but like he would come home late, late, late at night and then, you know, want to get busy. And I was like, I'm like, doing all of the home front like I'm doing everything on the home front and then I don't want you to just you know now I'm not interested and I was kind of using it as a weapon and yeah. so um, but then we hyper communicated something that we're going to talk about at the huge convention and we worked out that part and um our sex life also is con connected to our bank account and our business when our sex life was really healthy our business was healthy it's kind of like um I mean, everything, when everything's kind of connected, they bleed into each other. If you have a yeah. bad home life, it bleeds into your business. If you have a bad business, it will bleed into your home life. Same thing with the good. So when you are, you know, they, there's like a study done about 
the sex, the amount of sex you have with the amount of your bank account. So we will talk about that. I just, I, I, uh, I hope by then you, uh, you're not so uh, embarrassed about this. I think, you know, you'll, you'll rehearse this a bunch of times. And <laughs> She's actually not embarrassed. I, th- I just threw her off, off guard, but it's a really important thing. Believe it or not. It's, it's like funny, haha, but it's also not funny. Haha. Yeah. Uh, Cause there's a lot of dysfunction and pain inside of a lot of these relationships, lots, oh, yeah. lots and lots and lots, even though people act like there's not, it's not true. It's an epidemic problem. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a practical thing for married entrepreneurs. We're going to help with that. That's awesome. There's so many facets to this that just trying to, because if you are married to somebody who owns a business, you're married to the business, regardless if you want to or not, it's like having, you know, if one spouse has kids and the other doesn't, when you get married, you have kids. Like that's the only fact of it. So you have to find a way to make everything work together. Otherwise, none of it works. You can't have part of it work and not all of it. You know, I love Amen. it. Well, good. Well, if you don't you, get, you... sorry, cut you off. I just said thanks, man. Thanks, Jersey. We appreciate you. You're looking good, and I uh, look forward to seeing you next month. Man. Definitely, right. definitely. And if you guys want to go to Josh's class, if you have to, bring your spouse with. It's something that's going to be super, super worth it. And I'm telling you, if you can create a better bond with your teammate, your spouse, it's going to help every aspect of your life. So this class is going to be absolutely amazing. Like I said, I could listen to Josh talk about anything, and I would be, I would learn so much. So go just for that. Like Josh Tree says, he's excited that you're going to be there. Uh, he said, what day is your class? Do you know what day you're speaking? I actually don't know yet. I, yeah, the, I haven't gotten the, the itinerary for it. The schedule comes out a little bit closer as everything's getting worked and slots are moving, but make room for it, Josh. It's going to be really pretty awesome. Uh, it really is. Like I said, it's, it's just a facet of business that I think, too. When you look at all these conventions, it's not talked about your spouse. It's not talked about the connection that you have and the team that you're building it's just kind of like, it's like taxes. No one talks about it because they're like, ah, eh, it's not real great. Nah, I don't like that time of year. Uh, you know, we argued because I got my car repossessed, you know, like it, the, if it creates panic, it can also create happiness. So, but anyway, enough about that. Go to thehugeconvention.com, get your tickets, make sure to get your tickets. I'm telling you, I have bad news for everybody. The room block is sold out at the hotel, so you need to find out uh, arrangements. You have to get on this right now. I'm telling you right now. That is trying to get more uh, more uh, rooms right now, so please do uh, keep a track on that. Like this page so you can follow everything. Please do check out WCR Nation, the Window Cleaning Podcast. Check out Quick Talk Podcast. Josh is like baby. Everybody knows you from that, too. Uh, and I don't even think you like po- talked about what it was, but it's Quick Talk Podcast. Go check that out too. It's absolutely amazing. And go to the huge convention. Either way, we'll see you there. And uh, we'll see you again back tomorrow night with another one of these talks. So uh, until then, thanks for uh, talking, guys. Thanks a lot, Jersey. Take care, brother. Thank All right, you, have a great brother. one.